My name is Zoe Dingeman. I play football for Notre Dame. Robotic football. At the University of Notre Dame, football is a big deal. In the basement halls of the engineering school, a group of students are turning their beloved sport into science. The Robotic Football Club is an engineering club with students from a variety of different engineering majors that work together to design, build, fabricate, and play with robots. You may not think it, but robotic football actually is a lot like real football. Our goal in this club is to make the game as comparable to human football as possible. We have, for example, a quarterback that can throw a ball. We have wide receivers that can catch the ball. We have offensive linemen, defensive linemen. Offensive linemen on the kickoff, Dave Connor, Michelle. I want you hitting people on the kickoff. Okay. Robotic football is definitely a contact sport. You're trying to hit the other team's robots as hard as you can. And so you need to build designs that are robust, that can handle that sort of stress that they're constantly being placed under. From its founding six years ago, the club's roster now boasts 20 robot football players at a variety of positions, all controlled and driven by 35 humans on the sideline. This is RPM, it's our first string quarterback, and it's a really interesting robot. It uses semi-autonomous features to scan the field and find the receiver that it'd like to pass to. Once it does that, it can look at the size of the receiver and know how far it should throw the ball to it. This is Terabyte and it's our running back. It's really great at finding the gap to go down the field and get a touchdown. Irish Chocolate is one of our linebackers and it makes a lot of really great open field tackles. This is Justin Unit and it's our kicker. It can accurately kick the ball between two and 60 feet. This is one of the most precise robots on our team. Notre Dame competes against three other Midwest colleges in a tournament held each spring. But it takes a full school year to prepare for that gauntlet. In the fall semester, the team recruits new members and trains them for a one-off scrimmage with another college's team. This year, their fall opponent is Valparaiso University, and they're not leaving anything to chance. In the week before the game, they're running practice drills, they're learning the playbook, and they're watching tape just like any other football team. This is basically the, the culmination of all this work you've put in in the shop with these robots, building them, repairing them, designing them, and you're going out and basically watching your engineering put to the test. Irish on three. One, two, three. Irish! The rules of robotic football are very similar to that of human football, so we follow NCAA rules to the best of our ability. There are two 20-minute halves for a game with a 10-minute half time, so it's a very quick-paced game. There we go. These robots take a lot of big hits. We have a backup for every robot, just in case one breaks down. So if the quarterback breaks down, then we pull it off and put the second string one in, and the pit crew will work on it and try and fix it as quickly as possible. With their starting quarterback back in the game after a quick medical break, the robotic Irish fight to hold their narrow lead but can't score. A touchdown and an extra point will snatch victory from Notre Dame. This is the game. This is the game. Get it, get it, get it, get it. Yeah. Yes. The goal of this is to grow it to be a truly national competition where we can have multiple conferences competing for the trophy. One day, this could be a real sport, or maybe it already is. One, two, three, Irish! This is basically real football. It's just not humans playing it. 